So I just had this um, thought, I think. It's rolling, by the way. No, you know how I was like, I'm going to address the viewers as peace and grace to you. As, you know how John and Paul oh, would always yes. write yes. like their letters, and when they would write to the churches, they would always be like, peace and grace from our Lord That's Jesus Christ. That's copyright infringement. They'll sue us. Paul and John will come down and sue us. They're probably writing up the paperwork in heaven. So peace and grace from our Lord. I remember this. What? I can joke about. Got their lawyers, plenty of lawyers up there. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, Lord. I... <laughs> Anywho. Oh, by the way. Yeah. Because she's the dancing queen. Oh, let's please not do this again. Well, remember how... <laughs> We tried this video earlier, but she didn't feel good, so she laid down for a minute. Yeah, and I, I got, got the dancing, tired. dancing queen stuck in my head, and I asked her who sang it, and of course she didn't know. I mean, come on, this is Travis. Abba. I was gonna say, I thought of it, Abba. Of course, now you remember it and blow my stuff up. That's because I took a nap. I was gonna, be, I was gonna be like, I was gonna be like, I remember it now. It's Abba, and you're just like, Baba. Anywho, um, so we're here to do Exodus this week. We did Revelation last week, and I don't think we did. We didn't spill the beans last week when we were doing Revelation, but we started coordinating stuff for our movie. But it is official now. We are going to Wyoming. Last video, I said it first, and she got all mad too. So that's that's it. It is official. And it all started so way back in the summer during this video. Um, Four score, 30 when, years ago. Remember when we prayed? Because we had uh, had this. So we, I asked a friend to pray over us about the move. And I had like that, that day really just had this. I think the spirit just led me to really pray hard about because we were thinking of going to Idaho and for for some reason I felt the need to pray and I had my friend pray about the move and literally then I came out and I was sitting and you started talking about some doubts and I had this intense like a warning that came from deep deep inside it wasn't like fear but it was so intense that i just had i had to talk well, to you I mean, about it do you remember of, the, that yeah the name the name of the state is idaho it just sounds dumb i mean really it's, it's nothing just... to do with that Idaho. but you know what made this fear i mean sometimes we have to discern fears because of the enemy right i mean he, well, not, he it, loves to, just, to pray. Yeah, is, like, it, is it real fear? Is it real warning? Is it just us ourselves making it up in our minds so we won't do something? Is it the reticular, which is the reticular act? Most system? likely, or the enemy who right, so he feeds off of that. It's you, all like yeah, you, have to know. you know what I mean. So I find, and I've been finding that a lot of God's fears don't come from like irrational fears. They come from logical things. You know, like, he's a god of logic, like, not irrationalness. So if it's something that doesn't make sense, then you might be on to something. So we were going to a desert that in the summer for, like, two months got up to, like, 100 degrees. It got hot. It was still, like, so it's desert climate. You were going from desert to, like, desert minor. You know, the water situation and people situation was something that was of concern to us. And there was a lot of people going in there. The water there wasn't... The that, water there is okay. It's okay. Here, here's the deal. And I, I know no one wants to hear this. But I'm, I, sorry, I'm but. just trying to get out that there were... And, and the uh, we're moving for dust. So that's why desert and any type of dust that can roll in is like bad for us. We want to have a good ozone. We So they actually... Oh, don't like the ozone, the ozone the pollution. No, the ozone mean, layer is one of the ones that. Um, no, is, the, thing is that the ozone layer protects us from the sun's rays. Yeah, so that the um, atmosphere. Just no, the, it is ozone. The, pollu the pollution in because I think I think the maybe the they don't have. I mean, it's the best in the country. No, no, air quality. The ozone is one of the ones they use to rate air quality because I think if you don't have a you good sure protective layer, yeah, I mean, the ozone is just the ozone. It's no, not. it is one. So. 
Um, you can look it up. Because I looked it up when we were looking up Cheyenne. And all those... So that, like, warning was legitimate because they were actual logical things that I felt like the Lord was trying to speak to us about. Um, and he kept giving us like some small warnings all, all along like you yes. didn't feel great about it i would some just continually pray hard about it and then that big thing came to a blow and that's when we started looking because we've had one other and i say this because um do you want to speak about your thing because i didn't mean to cut you off i just was trying to make sure that the point got out before we got off track oh, so uh, that was like what was it I think we were talking just quickly about the the water was just important to us because well, we look, live in the desert here. Got, and there's got, not a great got water Lake, situation. Lake Mead, and to some extent Lake Powell, but Lake Mead, which feeds well, first off the Hoover Dam, the hydroelectric there, and there's tens of millions of people between mm-hmm. Vegas and Arizona, and you know that this that just general area, so. Lake Mead is is and that's that's it's legit. We drove by it on the way to Idaho. It's it's it's, it's not. They should call it a puddle now. It's it's insane how much it's gone. And um, you know you got to remember, forty years ago there was a couple million people out here at most. At most, probably not even maybe a million. Now there's forty. You just you have more people going to the desert. More people coming in from California. And it's the desert. There's not enough water. Forget about even, we could get into conspiracy and have fun all day. No, we're just making but, a quick But mention. when you have tens of millions of people coming to a place that already doesn't have water, they're going to use it up. And, um, you know, it's, go- it's going. Sorry, it's going. So when the water runs out, that means not only the problem is the water runs out, the power runs out because of the hydroelectric from the Hoover Dam. So you're going to have tens of millions of people trying to get out and... Boise is pretty darn close to, you know, the Vegas area, relatively. Yeah, Nevada's so. almost worse than Arizona. Yeah, so um, you just don't want to be too close to that because and that wasn't, I'm sorry, it's going to be bad. And just one more thing, it, it's going to be bad. So I, I advise you to get out if you live in this area. I know, because I talk to people around here and they, they kind of like look around like they know, but they're like, well, we'll find a way. And I'm like, well, I'm glad that you have that positive and we don't know i'm glad that there's that positive thing there's two there's two opinions that i that i've run into two two reactions and one is i'm glad you have the positive thing but it's like no you won't not with water it's not one of those things where like food we can go a couple weeks at least you don't have water and you're done and in the desert when you have millions of other people looking for it you're you're done uh and then number two there's a couple people that i've run into they're just like oh well they'll figure it out that's what we pay taxes for that's a direct quote and this is an, coming from a pretty intelligent guy, so it just shows you how out of touch that a lot of people are that still don't understand that the government is not here f- for us. They're not. They they're working against us. It's obvious. Um, and no, they're not going to figure anything out. They're probably not say much because YouTube will take our video down. No, that's with medical stuff. You can still talk about everything else mostly. Anywho. Um, yeah. Um. So, uh, but yeah, look, you live in anywhere around here. I'd suggest leaving. So, um, so for her health, it's ninety. And that wasn't the water wasn't number no, her, her, number one as to was. why we didn't choose the like was. Boise was the desert climate the and dust. the growing number yeah. of people moving in there, and we're trying to get away from people in general. So that is so. Um, so that is how we started to change our decision. And I just wanted to make a point before I move on that um, we had this other warning about a medicine. And I'm learning how to live a spirit-filled life and hearing the Lord's true voice and how, because he's a God of truth and a God of peace and righteousness and, yeah, no, and no, logic. Not always peace all the time. Old well, Testament. in our life at least. Um, and he, cause he, you know, he wants us to live peaceful lives. And I, we had this warning about a medicine, both Jason and I, he got a vision and I felt this warning, but this warning was sort of for me based off my own fear, I think of starting the medicine. And there was a, and here's the thing with the devil. He's tricky because yeah, there was a little truth to that right we were afraid to start this ra medicine because 
it you know we were getting ready to move and we were like freaking geez if it's gonna throw me down and i don't function as well, well because she you should add in that the, the, the medications that are on the scale that she uses um can take quite a can take some time to kick in and when they do they can really floor you for a little bit yeah so you really have to plan um you have to think about when you start taking them i mean most people most of the time can just start taking them but if you've got like a major vacation coming up soon uh, you get prescribed or, or moving or something you should consider, consider and that, this was a new med for me like a new group um all together and we were getting ready to that's where the truth is and that's where the devil gets you because he never takes something that's he always spins truth and then and he knew he knows when you're kind of fearful of something because there's some truth to it so you know he gave us this feeling this warning and you know, like the devil did? yeah, I felt like in a little, you know, no, I that. So the devil gave us this warning. Well, like a warning to be like, Hey, you don't want to take it. Cause well, you know, you're going to start this. And when I decided oh, that I didn't want to do it, I was giving myself a false sense of peace, not logic. Because when we really after, so I decided not to take it three weeks later, I feel like I can talk about it now. We started, I was about ready to go to my appointment. And I told the Lord, I was like, you know, I, you're God of truth and I can't, you know, why I'm like, I'm not going to say that I started it just to get more of the med and then have it on hand in case I want to start taking it. I was like, it just didn't feel right to me to do. And I, this mo and that morning I prayed and told him that was my plan. And that night we started randomly talking about the medicine and we started like going, you know, maybe this isn't logical because I we're moving to a new place. I only have like one refill of the medicine. My insurance didn't start till December. What if I don't get start in? Start taking a new med and you have to go to your brand new doctor who doesn't know your history, doesn't know you, and they got to figure out, kind of figure out what's going on when your old doctor knows your symptoms, knows you, kind of knows how you are, can can, can kind of be like, all right, well, what's we can pin? It's easier. New doctors just harder to do that with. So that's one of the things too. It's just like. It was just a bad decision um, for several reasons, but her fear initially is what, and fear and a, a at first, seemingly logical conclusion. Um, that's why you can be careful because it's very difficult because if you don't critically think and de de think deeply about the subject, you can be like, well, it all makes sense. Why would I want to take it now and, um, you know, be trashed for the move because it might put you down for a month with no energy and all that. But mm -hmm. and that's a valid point. That's but where, that's where the devil the gets is, you. The problem, you know he always does. You know what it's like? You know, it's like, it's like being back in school with those stinking, irritating tests, those bubble sheet tests where there was four answers and two of them were just garbage. But two of them could have been the answer. But there's always one that was a better answer. I hate when teachers did that. I was like, wow, oh, one of them was a better answer. But it, it's true because you got an answer that's, well, that makes sense. But then when you really dig, dig and think things through, you're like, well, that's one, that is right. But that's one thing. There's four or five other things that outweigh that, which are true, which means you should take it now and not, and not hold off. So that's, that's what she's getting at. But the devil will take, if you just, if you just, think you're thinking it through but aren't it's just and i get it's tricky if you're like well i think logically if i do it blah blah it's like no um you really gotta stop well because we were like we'll take it when we get there and then i'll but start then, to but then it's like who wants to start a new medicine right when you're unpacking plus, plus you're, in a, new, yeah, plus you're in a new uh geographical location with just different plants and different everything so if you start to take on new symptoms you have no idea if it's the new meds or if it's something else in your new area that's that's uh, causing this new symptoms, which is entirely possible. So uh, and right, when I'm, you're taking new meds, you want to make sure everything's the same. Because, in the comfort of my own home yeah. and not like in a move. And now I'm because you're gonna be stressed when you get to a new place. Right. You, it's just a, well, there's all sorts of psychological reasons I could list off, but one of them is just safety. You don't know where anything is, and that's that's a stressor. You, you know, even though it's, you're, I don't mean safe as in you're going to get carjacked or whatever, but you don't realize that people don't realize it. But just knowing that I know where the supermarket is and the gas station down the road is, 
that's that's a, like a a comfort thing. Whereas if you don't even know where the gas station is, or maybe you don't, but you don't even know your local area, that's a stressor. Yeah. And so, uh, and I was able to get like my refills and it was done. And I, you know, I had to kind of trust that the, in the Lord's logical plan and that, you know, he, you know, would get me through, you know, and that I, I had what, two months before we moved. And instead of looking at it from like a fearful perspective some truth I kind of looked at it as a logical um, perspective and trust in the Lord that he knew what he was doing even though I was a little scared to start a new med and there's things that go along with it sometimes he does ask you to do those kind of things and it was logical like what you know and the same thing with Idaho it it was logical because our criteria weren't being met and he was trying to help us with the with the criteria and the enemy with the other one was just trying to make things more stressful and kind of like deceive with a little bit of truth and that's the great thing is that God always kind of comes in and advocates you know like for you and when you make a wrong thing he'll meet you where you're at and he'll come back and he didn't let me go into that doctor visit stupidly you really have to think you really have to you we know, listen it to might him. take a couple days too to really think and listen because mm-hmm. i'll tell you there's been plenty of times now where we thought we thought well first we were young and just like didn't think things through and obviously there was bad consequences because we were young and dumb then you get a little bit older and think, well, I'm thinking this through. And you try to think of one thing, like you said, and, and, it, and, you, and then afterwards, when you, it's, you still crash, and you're like, well, you know, it gets really frustrating at that point because you're like, whoa, we thought it through. We still got, you know, dumped on. Um, and, and that's when you have to really, like, pray and have faith and dig deep and, and really um, find a way because everybody kind of has a different way to, to figure out you know your decision making paradigm um but every situation like because i'll tell you right now that's in our lives too that's where everybody's lives is a mess it's just because one most people make decisions based off of emotion and don't think things through um you you gotta get emotion out of there uh, and there's plenty of ways to to to, you can google them or youtube make decisions you know you gotta learn how to do that stuff they don't teach you that stuff on purpose um they don't teach you how to control your emotions. They don't teach you how to pray and ask for help. Well, I was going to say, you, know, you can pray, but I think discerning discerning the spirit and that God's practice too. true voice can take That's, a lot of practice. And the enemy wants to come in and kind of doubt, deceive fear, you into thinking maybe sometimes confidence. that you're doing the right thing. when It's, it's all the devil. So I feel like some of the ways that I've learned to question answers that I get or just things in general is like know who God is and know the scripture. So, you know, he doesn't do things based off of lies. Um, you know, it's not going to be deceitful. Oh, sorry. It's going to be truthful. I have a present coming for you. It's right, I mean, to, today. Sometime hmm. today, yeah. You'll see. Okay. We should probably, it's almost 20 minutes now, so we probably get, we yeah, get some Yeah, let more. me finish. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, and then you're right. Yeah. That's a good, uh, well, um, yeah, so that's just like a, a couple of things that I've been learning, like how to do with things. If it's like a deceitful, um, if there's like making sure you investigate things to make sure that it's logical. Does it line up with scripture? Does it line up with scripture? And if you need to go back, I know it's spooky, but if you got to go back to the Old Testament and look through the 613 laws, um, not just the Ten Commandments, but the rest of them that are presented there, and um, was it Leviticus, I think, in a couple, it's spread out, but go look. Because, you know. I mean, sometimes God asks you to do like you hard, to, you have to faith. hard things and things like that. But, you know, you've got to kind of pray it over a lot and make sure that it's not something that's, like, right. backhanded. And Sometimes you have to do really hard stuff, like use regular toilet paper. And really lights. investigate things, too, sometimes. So that's why we ended up going with um, Cheyenne. And initially I was a little nervous about... She was. 
elevation and so I just if I would yeah. like it, if I would. She's not exactly Miss Cowgirl. And, and apparently I, there's a lot of cowboy stuff out I there. I didn't know for sure, you know, because we didn't go. And the and I wasn't anything against people or anything like that. Yeah, I just... She's, she's just lying. No, that's me. Sorry. You can dance. And, wait, what was I going to say? Not anything against people. You're just nervous about going to Cheyenne. For obvious yeah, reasons. We've and have never been there. No, right. And I was like, this is where the leap of faith came in, actually. Because so sometimes God does reroute you. And but he did it off of logic. So you had asked in one of the videos that we did if you know this was some place that the Lord wanted us to go, if he would soften our heart, soften my heart to it. And I just knew during that video that it really did start to soften. And I had thought about it that night I remember and we made a video on the update and how I was like okay like I'm you know sometimes God asks people to go to like Mars missionary like other countries different areas of the world I just want to take time out here look I'm praying here in my video to thank you so much that you have not uh had gave me the calling to do um Missionary stuff like that, uh, because I could not handle that. Props to those people. They did all deserve me- they all deserve medals. I'm not putting those people down. I'm, pro- I'm lifting them up because yeah. I couldn't do that. So I people. just want to thank you that on camera right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Be the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. People risk their lives. Holy smokes. They go into hard situations, and I'm like, if I can't go to Wyoming, like Wyoming, really, like how am I going to do anything that He asked me to do if I can't do this? Like sometimes. That's just how it works. And uh, so I softened my heart and we sort of decided on that for, you know, and then, you know, right before we started looking officially, we had prayed because we wanted to make sure. And here's where the Lord comes in with logic. In fact, he had brought us to a web page for lungs and it showed that Cheyenne was number one for pollution, um, Which like I ozone believe. stuff, dust. Well, I guess or, it's, really, yeah. it's really windy there, so it just blows all the... And it's not... Problem is, is Number one in the country. The problem is the places <coughs> we looked, especially now we're in a valley, you know, when you have mountains all around and you're, all the crap just collects in here. And like, you know, partially like California where the, yeah, the sea breeze comes in, but the mountains block it, so it doesn't... It just sits there. That's why pollution in California sits... The mountains block the can't carry it away and here it doesn't get carried away because we're in oh the valley it's almost like i'm sure a lot of people will know what i'm talking about have you ever been in a place like like a, a, a place like in maybe fall or spring where the nights are still cold but the days get warm and you're driving along and you have the car windows open or even on a motorcycle and you're driving and driving and driving then you feel the road <laughs> dip down and all of a sudden you're like whoa that got cold then you yes. don't wake up and it, the yes. wind gets warm. So it's because that low area, the cold air is denser, so it, it drops. While the pollution and stuff drops. So just think of how even little swaths of road you dip, how much cold air collects there. It's the same with the shitty air. Mm-hmm. So you're in a place like Phoenix, and the air is, sorry, sorry, dog shit. Um, she's developed serious issues and since we've been here, and I'm, I'm pretty good. But, um, so, but, you know, a lot of people say that, which is why I never got, I think this was decades ago, why doctors used to recommend asthmatics and whatnot come out here. Because, I, I guess know, you, if you don't have not, a dust not anymore, allergy, I don't not know. Not anymore. Well, who knows, too, all the garbage they spray in the Well, so, um, yeah, so, <laughs> oh, so that's we why get, we oh, got, we so a, that's yeah. kind of, I think, where... That, you know, so he had said that, or he had showed us that. And then, you know, we had pl- applied in Boise, but we weren't, we just weren't getting anywhere. anywhere. We were getting blocked. And I know some of it was the timing, but I also, you know, would always ask him for, after, right after this, we'll do it. Right after his, you know, always have, like, his will be done. And to always block anything that we are doing that isn't right so last week which is also hard by the way talk about discernment yeah, because part of it is is does he want you to just put in the effort right like you know try try hard don't just give up or whatever or that's why with the way we do it we could be wrong is we try and, and exhaust every avenue we try our butt off and if we still can't accomplish what we're trying to do then that's god going uh-uh. 
because we don't just want to run into one little no right in the beginning and then go, oh, well, God must not want us to do it. That, that's what you're we talking about earlier with that's kind of correlated to what we were talking about earlier when she said, you know, the devil tries to trick you when you think you think you think things through, think of the first thing that confirms it and go, okay, it's fine. It's like, no, you got to keep going past that. Just yeah. Like, just like I just said with, with trying, it's, it's you know, Praying. try and then you get the first no. Well, don't give up. You know, when you ex exhaust all avenues, then you know it's just not meant to be. I think like something that I've learned is praying through it to see with exception. There's always exceptions, obviously. To see if the Lord um, like makes one, if it's His timing, because you might just be wrong with your timing, or if He'll make a way. Like if you get blocked by like a doctor thing, like praying it through and keeping to try to see, you know, because He is a way maker and He does make a way. You know, sometimes you do have to pray it and like kind of exhaust all avenues and same with like the apartment thing um we it was hard to find apartments for like the dates and the price point but and i originally got this email saying that because i want to give glory to god always because he is just he's a way maker and I'm, um he just works miracles so much and he at first they were like no waitlist only then the second email they had these two places they were like, for two do you want, days they were like, yeah they were like well, there's a wait two list. days there's a wait list but they were like well do you want one of these, these one of these and we're like i thought there was a wait list open i cutting anybody but we got one and then right. they approved us in well so hour. yeah they it was weird because then after i responded it made it almost seem like there wasn't one again but um so we were like let's just apply because we didn't but she finally got back and said that date was available so we applied and we didn't think that it was going to take 30 freaking minutes i just remember praying in the bathroom that day because i was trying to make this like decision you know with medicine and it can be really complicated and i was like man it'd just be so much like easier if i knew like for sure um, if we were going here and we had an apartment and this was like the right thing. And I just remember praying that like literally an hour later. Plus how the people with the wait list? I mean, there's a wait list. They, she said, I got the emails to prove it. Yeah. And then literally an hour later, we got a congratulations. Well, 30 minutes after. See, that's what's hard. You know, I mean, like, that is God. For people like me, here's the thing. I'm the biggest doubter in the world. And for people like me, I like seeing concrete, undeniable evidence um but that doesn't always jive with faith so but i have been because i used to be like are you sure babe could it could be coincidence because things happen but mm -hmm. i've seen time and time again more and more recently as we believe more and more too and all that but things like that it's like well there's a wait list sorry and we're running out of options and then the same lady who said there's a wait list goes oh do you want one of these two places um, because what about the people on the wait list? It should have been offered to them. And she's like, yeah, oh, you're approved. Just give us your... Like, like that's God. It's like, what? I don't know what God does. Like, what? he makes amazing miracles And I can, I can list you like a dozen us. things like that that have happened that shouldn't have... Well, especially when you like, pray on you it, about, like that I day. I can tell you about major refills for meds that shouldn't be have been refilled. We have documentation that there was no refills left and they were like major ones for RA and... They called up on the blue. I'm like, oh, yeah, we got your refills ready. And she's like, yesterday you said there was no refills. And I know you can say, well, it was just probably a computer mess up. And it's like, you know, I, that's what I would think. Too. But got documentation that says none. They said it's none on the phone. Then a day later, it's like, oh, you're all set. And it's like, what? And again, if that happens once in a while, I'd be like, oh, coincidence. But it's happened so often. And it's like, oh, thank you, Lord. I, you know, at that point, I think that's where faith comes in. Because some people will still be like, who were like I was before. I'm like, no, nah, that's coincidence bullshit. But it's like, no, no, I, I get it now. It's like, that's not coincidence. There is no when it coincidence. Happens over it's just and over God. Again, with, with stuff like that. But, yeah, and when you, so yeah, happy, you're, really you just can see amazing. And I'm we're going to make, you know, I just, and when I say this, I do it as a um, glory to God. Um, and who he is, and I just want to give him big ups, man. The praise, Jamaica and um, also I don't do it like to be like, oh, look what God does for us. It's just also to show people no, to well, give you, them hope. You too can get um, can get stuff from God. All you have to do is 
pray and believe. In Jesus. No, it's just a, it's a hope and just to show people like how he who he is, you know, and like this is how he oh. takes care of people. Like he takes care of people and he and he does work miracles and make a way. And like that's not just for like one person type of thing. It's you know when you accept him in, into your life. So that's kind of like why we do it, and we want to give praise to God because He deserves that glory. And when He makes impossible things happen, who else deserves it? So I'm sorry, I'm jealous of Moses. Chapter 19. Moses got face FaceTime with God. <laughs> yeah. When they were like when he God when he was when he was like rag, when God was ragging on the brother and sister, and he's like. Other prophets, I give bits and info through dreams and stuff. Moses, I talk face to face. So why would you think to even talk shit to him? It's like, like the obvious, like, like Moses talks to me face to face. Who else? You know, all these other prophets, which are still prophets, a major thing. He's like, I only give little visions to snippets here and there. He's like, Moses, I talk face to face. And you want to talk shit to Moses? That's my boy, yo. And they're like, oh, sorry, sir. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Mo- well, I mean, Moses was um, the intercessor and probably the closest thing that he had to that like type of relationship <sighs> with Jesus, you know. All right, Until so. Jesus came, of course. I mean, he, Moses was like way lower so Jesus. Wait a so we had to do 19. How many we didn't do? Um, well, we tried sure. to do four. So. 19. One, two, three, four. Mm. Um, they're pretty short. So. Well, maybe we can do three to four. Yeah. So thank you, Lord, so much for all you've done with this move and all the crazy journey that we had together. And just, yeah, we just appreciate okay. how you take care of uh, us. Do you, you want to Do you want to start with 19? Yeah, I don't care. Your deal? Shake. Deal? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. I cheated. I looked ahead at 20, and I wanted to read 20 because that's the Ten Commandments. Sucker. Yeah, I don't care. Yes, you do. Nah. All right, um, so then I guess I'll pray. Oh, sorry, this hurts. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, ready? Dear Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for everything you blessed us with, and thank you for blessing us with the ability to get your word out uh, for your kingdom to our tens of viewers. Hopefully that number grows so people can see your glory. And um, we just want to pray that you'd be with us here for this reading so that we properly convey it to people so that we don't get it wrong and lead people astray and be wolves in sheep's clothing. I got the ten. Yeah, I got wolves in sheep's In Jesus' name we pray via the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear amen. Lord, you can make my English work, please. <laughs> amen. <laughs> oh, you're going first. Okay. Yes, that's right. Okay, here we go. In the third month when the children of Israel were gone forth, out of the land of Egypt. The same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai, for they were departed from Rephidim and were and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness. And there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a particular treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces 
all these words which Yahweh commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that Yahweh hath spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto Yahweh. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto Yahweh. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Go on unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes and be ready against the third day for the third day Yahweh will come upon will come down in the sight of all the people onto Mount Sinai and thou shalt set bounds onto the round or onto the people round about saying Take heed to yourselves that ye go not up into the mount or touch the border of it. Whosoever toucheth the mount shall be surely put to death. There shall not a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. <clears throat> when the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people. And they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceedingly loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the nether part of the mount and Mount Sinai was all together on a smoke because Yahweh descended upon it in fire and the smoke thereof ascended as smoke of a furnace and the whole mount quaked greatly and when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder Moses spake and God answered him by a voice and Yahweh came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount and Yahweh called Moses up to the top of the mount and Moses went up and Yahweh said unto Moses go down charge the people lest they break through unto Yahweh to gaze and many of them perish and let priests also which come near to Yahweh, sanctify themselves, lest lest Yahweh break forth upon them. And Moses said unto Yahweh, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for thou chargest us, saying, Set bounds about the mount, mount and sanctify it, And Yahweh said unto him, Away, get thee down, and thou shalt come up, thou and Aaron with thee. But let not the priests and the people break through to come up unto Yahweh, lest he break forth upon them. So Moses went down unto the people and spake unto them. Um, Is this saying that they like didn't listen or sanctify themselves so they couldn't come close? No, no, I don't think so. I think it's just... I mean, I get that he... Well, first off, Moses got a workout. His workout in that day. Up down the mountain, down the mountain, up the mountain, down the mountain. He must have been like... Wah. That's true. His legs were really jacked. No, they just had to sanctify themselves, but they still couldn't. They was only so close they can come, I think, you know? Because uh... even if you sanctify themselves, you still have sin, and God can't be in the presence of sin. 
I think that's kind of what. What's well, going that on I know for sure. Yeah. Yes. So I think that's what's going on there. I mean, I think that's why Jesus. So that way we yeah, can. That's yeah. what. That way he can be like yeah. reside in us now because. So I still, I still like. I, I'm just. It's weird to me though how strenuously it's stated that God can't be in the presence of sin, uh, which I get, but. Moses wasn't perfect, so obviously he can make exceptions when he wants, because obviously he's God. You know, it's just that that whole thing I get, but still a part of me is like it's still weird. Like I know he, he like hates sin and he can't even be around it, but it's like it kind of proves to me that my thought was right because it's like, well, you, but you made it, so you can do anything you want. So if you want to just forget about it, then you can. And obviously it's true because you saw Moses was next to him and Aaron too, because Aaron wasn't was definitely not perfect. Do you see what I'm saying? Remember how I had this conversation with you a bunch of times because I couldn't figure it out? And um, you were like, I just can't be by it. I'm like, he's God. He can be by well, whatever he wants. Well, how close was he to them? Well, they're at the foot of the mountain. He was on top, so... But how close, I wonder, did Moses and... Oh, he saw him face to face, especially at one time. It stood straight up in the tent in a meeting. They were face to face. Yeah, and but remember, I wonder God how wrestled close. God yeah, well, face to face is face to face. And remember, God wrestled with Jacob as in hands on limp or the was rest that of your the, life. Or that might have been the angel. We're not sure. Okay, the well to Jacob you Lord. can maybe say angel, but Moses certainly was the Lord, so according to the book. Well, I mean, I guess as we reread it, we'll, well kind I guess of... the point is that they stress it so much, but it's like, well, God can't even be. It's like God can do whatever he wants. That's what I like the way it's worded. I well, guess I'm, I'm a thinking, stickler. Because God was like, if God wants to go hang out in the sin bar, he can go in there, and you know, it's not like he, it's almost like it's a physical barrier for God. I do think no. it's under, hard to understand it must be just the from way human that I, perspectives. No, but my too. point is, you can't say God can't do anything. If you wanted to sit right next to sin, he could. Now, if you want to stress that he doesn't want to be around it, but just the way it's worded, I, you know, and I, I know it's probably more of a limitation for us. I just don't like the way it's worded. It might just be hard for a perfect being to be. I, I get that it's hard around for, but, a bunch of but, imperfect beings. But you know, can, maybe but, that's against his nature, and we don't right, know his he can laws still or do anything. It. Like he's God; he made everything, so we can still snap a finger and do whatever he wants. Well, I mean, does he? Did he really make sin? I think Adam and Eve sort of made sin. Well, okay, let me let me put it this way: then. there's nothing. On God this, made everything that's perfect. No, okay, so but there's nothing on this earth that occurs that God can't tolerate, I guess is what I'm getting at. Because the way the Bible makes it seem is, well, if, if what you're saying is true and humans made sin, then it's almost like, well, sin can kill God because he can't be by it. That's what I get when I read it. It's almost like, God can't be by sin. It's like, what's Well, I think it's him? hard to be around. Is it like crisp, kryptonite to Superman? Does it make him weak? Well, I think like, because no, of, of the powers of and stuff, not. it's hard to be around him anyway. Well, that I get. Just I mean, I think that's of power, part of it right. too, is that like... I just again, it's, maybe it's the way I'm tr- I'm interpreting the way it's written. Well, like, and we're I mean, still trying to understand all of this because we don't have it. I, I mean, if it was just worded, if, it's worded, if it was more worded like God can't tolerate sin because it's just unclean or whatever, then I'd be like, well, I get that. But the way it's worded, sometimes like he can't be by it. It's almost like what's he's Superman and the sins like kryptonite and it'll weaken him. That no way, he's God. None, nothing we produce on Earth can do anything to him. So possibly, I mean. Right. I think that's how there's our interpretation of it. Right. Well, number but 20. we don't know for sure. I mean, well, right, I could get, we could be getting completely all wrong. Right, exactly. All right, I 20. mean, here we go, yo. Okay. Like the ten, who is it? The Ten Commandments. And God spoke all these words: "I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me." You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. I bumbled that up a little. You should not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. 
but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall do no, uh, do not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. For, a, for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land your, the Lord gave, your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, Speak to us <coughs> yourself and we will listen, but do not have God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. The people remained at a distance while Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. Turn page. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites this, You have seen for yourselves that I have spoken to you from heaven. Do not make any gods to be alongside me. Do not make for yourselves gods of silver or gods of gold. Make an altar of earth for me, and sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, your sheep and goats, and your cattle. Whenever I cause, when, uh, wherever I cause my name to be honored, I will come to you and bless you. If you make an altar of stones for me, do not build it with dressed stones, for you will defile it if you use a tool on it. And do not go up to my altar on steps lest your nakedness be exposed on it. Uh, what in the world does that mean? Maybe because God's all about robes, and when you walk up steps, you can, like, see up the robe? I don't know. It's all Hold good. on, neither. Wait, Hold read it. it again. And do not go up to my altar on steps, lest your nakedness be exposed on it. I sort of wonder if that's, like, your heart will be exposed on it. But with, why with steps? I go up to his altar with, like, maybe that means don't get close to him, for your heart will be exposed. Like, the, you know what I mean, nakedness Well, here's the, the thing. If, if he just said, lest your nakedness be exposed, you could interpret that a million names, but the fact that it was preceded by, go to my altar on steps, and then before that they were just talking about stones, I have to assume it's just, it's just you know what I'm saying, it's not, it's it, literal, like, there's stone steps, don't, don't do, like. Thou shall not build it up. Yeah, what does yours say? Okay, and if thou will make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of H E W N something stone. H E W Hewn stone. For if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. I guess. What about neither after? thou, neither shalt thou go up by steps onto my altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. Step by step. I, I think it's know. like don't get close to the altar. The only ones who could were the priests that were sanctified. Um, I think the regular people weren't supposed to go by the altar. I think it's sort of because. Um, the truth like their hearts would be exposed upon it because they weren't clean i guess you know because i remember like the priests were supposed to um kind of like sanctify themselves and kind of make themselves there's a certain ritual of like to like kind of purify themselves it was not just about even back then i don't think uh, it was I'm, just look, i'm totally rolling with you with that if it wasn't specifically said they're talking about stones made out of you know, cut stones, like talking about physical, like the way you build something. 
That's well, I why. think two things can be like. Well, sure. And yeah. I mean, yeah. and I think that because remember, even like the clean, the unclean, and clean. I don't even think it was just about so much. Even back then, there might have been a little bit. But the clean and unclean was still about the heart back then and trying to clean your heart, right? Make it clean. It wasn't just about the body. That, I think that, that was symbolization. Jesus said that's what you put into you. It's what comes out yeah, of you. Yeah, it could have been very well much symbolism on cleanliness and uncleanliness of I the guess. heart and your nakedness because Jesus came to reveal the truth of the heart. That was kind of like who he was right that was one of his missions yeah, so yeah. that's why i'm sort of wondering um thank you i think maybe if i'm wrong that they don't go like go, don't build an altar to, with a ton of steps to go up by it because then you're gonna be like your heart is gonna be Maybe. I mean, I'm sure God knew it anyway, but I mean, there might have just maybe there was something about getting close to it too because they weren't clean. Like, they didn't go through the. And God had a certain ritual too to be by the altar. So. All right, 21. Well, hang on a second. Maybe. 50. So we might be able to do 22. We could definitely do 21. Let's do it. We might be able to do 22. We'll see. All right. Well. Now these are the judgments which thou shalt... Oh, and before we get into this, we there's a lot to talk about in the Ten Commandments because we sort of spent all the time on that. We should we probably make a separate video about that. I was just going to ask you if you wanted to yeah. do... We'll do that one next. Yeah. Like, I will do an, uh, a Ten Commandments video and, what us noobs and a think revelation. About the, the Ten Commandments. The noob point of view. Yeah, because there's... Yeah. That should have been a noob. How could we channel. not... Yeah. The noob but point of view. There's too much to talk about in just this video for that. Yeah. Okay. Now these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. If thou buy a Hebrew servant six years, he shall serve. And in the seventh, he shall go out free for nothing. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married... Then his wife shall go with him. If his master have given him a wife, and she bore him sons or daughters, the wife and the children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. And if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free, then his master shall bring him onto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door or onto the door post, and his master shall bore his ear through with an an A U L all all, and he shall serve him forever. And if a man sell his daughter to be a maidservant, she shall not go out as the men servants do. If she please not her master who hath betrothed her to himself, then shall he let her be redeemed to sell her unto a strange nation. He shall have no power, seeing he hath dealt deceitfully with her. If he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage shall not diminish. And if he do not these three unto her, then shall she go out free without money. He that smiteth a man so that he die shall surely be put to death. And if a man lie not in wait, but God deliver him into his hand, then I will appoint thee a place whither he shall flee. 
But if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him with guile, thou shalt take him from mine altar that he may die. And he that smitteth his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. And he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. And he that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. And if men strive together, and one smite another with a stone, or with his fist, and he die not, but keepeth his bed, if he rise again and walk abroad upon a staff, then shall he that smote him be quiet? No, be quick, sorry. Only he shall pay for the loss of his time and shall cause him to be thoroughly healed. And if a man smite his servant or his maid with a rod, he die under his hand. He shall be surely punished. Notwithstanding, if he continue a day or two, he shall not be punished, for he is his money. If men strive and hurt a woman with a child, so that her fruit depart from her, and yet no mischief follow, he shall be surely punished according as the woman's husband will lay upon him, and he shall pay as the judges determine. And if any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. And if a man smite the eye of his servant or the eye of his maid that it perish, he shall not, he shall let him go free for his eye's sake. And if he smite out his manservant's tooth or his maidservant's tooth, he shall let him go free for his tooth's sake. If an ox gore a man or a woman that they die, then the ox shall be surely stoned and his flesh shall not be eaten. But the owner of the ox shall be quit. If the ox were were wont to push with his horn in time past, and it hath been testified to his owner, and he hath not kept him in, but that he hath killed a man or a woman, the ox shall be stoned, and his owner also shall be put to death. If there be laid on him a sum of money, then he shall give for the ransom of his life whatsoever is laid upon him. Whether he gave, whether he have gored a son or have gored a daughter, according to his, according to this judgment, shall it be done unto him. If the ox shall push a manservant or a maidservant, he shall give unto their master thirty shekels of silver, and the ox shall be stoned. And if a man shall open a pit, or if a man shall dig a pit, and not cover it, and an ox or an ass fall therein, the owner of the pit shall make it good. And give money unto the owner of, of them. And the dead bee shall be his. And if one man's ox hurt another's that he die, then they shall set the live ox and divide the money of it. And the dead ox also shall they divide. Or if it be known that 
the ox hath used to push in time past, and his owner hath not kept him in. He shall surely pay ox for ox, and the dead shall be his own. Yeesh. <laughs> There's a lot in there. <laughs> I forgot. So we're getting to all the... Um, yeah. Starting to get into the rules. Tough but yeah. fair. Well, I mean, I don't know. I feel like maybe we should go through it and like do a video on like the Ten Commandments and maybe like kind of... Something tells me we're going to be making a lot of videos because if we want to talk about this stuff, we, obviously we do. Yeah, it can't be done. It's going to be tough to just, because you can't just, stuff like this. Like, I want to talk, the only, I, I get all this and I'm, I'm down, I'm down. The only one I'm kind of questioning is, is um, I wish I had further breakdown is, is if a man digs a pit and someone falls in it, the man's responsible. I'd like to further explanation on that because, you know, it's like here, you know, what they do now here if like... Um, well, again, longer video because if someone comes on your property and falls down and they sue you, it's like, well, let's look at the situation. Did they fall down because your property was in disrepair? One, because that matters to me, in my opinion. Two, were they invited on your property or were they trespassing? You know, there's, there's a bunch of caveats here to consider and this just covers an overview like... If they, were, if they were trespassing, then I don't care what the condition of the property oh, is Oh, there's in. just a lot They should be... be um, it's their fault. But if your property... If they were invited and you did something stupid or you made like a tree fort that wasn't... And, and they fell down, then how are they supposed to know you didn't build it properly to code or whatever? Then it is your fault. So, I think. So... Um, I actually would feel like we should just kind of pray about... So, we need another video. The if, passages yeah. that we made... Um, made yeah. the passages that we read sorry my brain you read the scripture now you no know. <laughs> but um we should pray and maybe do a little bit of research on some of these things yeah. and we can't do kind that. of formulate another we video yeah i don't know if we should because there's so much just to talk yeah. about with um 20 and 21 to be honest right. that i don't want to add in 20 yeah, there's a lot 22. of heavy stuff there beating handing out beatings and revenge <laughs> revenge yeah yeah, that's, that's a lot to digest. That's why, again, now we're getting into the meat and potatoes of why a lot of churches and Christians don't like reading and don't straight up like the Old Testament because it hurts our feelings. But and the problem is, is a lot of times these people haven't actually read it through themselves to get the context. They've just heard snippets and um, people who use those snippets mixed with agenda to, you know, cast bad light on the Old Testament. Now, obviously, there's some things that just obviously speak from themselves. And hey, that's the way God looked at it. Things were different back then. And we can get into it, but we need a video in and of itself. Well, we what need a whole video on yeah. 20 and 21, just with an, more of an interpretation, yeah. not just a reading. So, so maybe gonna, we'll do that next. We'll call it. Well, we have to do, um, we're going to do Revelation yeah. again next. And then we'll, and we'll also do yeah. that video. So that'll give us some, um, yeah, because like you said, there's, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on there. And I really want to actually, I don't feel like we had time to really go through and, we could write a whole video on a couple of verses on that one. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so what are we at? Exodus. We got to. We'll start at twenty-two, because we stopped at twenty-one. Perfect. All right. You want to prayer us out? Oh, I had you had a pen. Oh, okay, sorry, I didn't know you had one. Oh no, that's okay. Lord, we want to first um, humble ourselves before you and give you so much thanks and so much praise for all the things that you do. You um you just take such good care of us, and we're so thankful for your grace and your mercy and your patience and understandingness. And thank you so much um, for Jesus, so that we can have forgiveness of sins and just have the Spirit inside of us to help us, you know, and help us in our everyday lives and help us discern the truth from the lies and just to help lead us. Um, in a better life and we're just so 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 thankful and we just want to pray that the words that we speak are from your heart um we don't want to hear ourselves we want to hear truth from you and we also just pray blessings upon blessings for our viewers and um we just pray that um 
they would find a relationship with Jesus and that also, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's it. Mm-hmm. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Pig alert! No, I was... Uh, it's four minutes long.